Hi there everybody, Peter of England bringing you um, a very important video. Most of the videos are important, some are probably more important than others. Um, I spent the last few weeks uh, compiling this one um, and it is all to do with something that most of you will be generally unaware of, generally unconcerned about, but nevertheless um, aware of some of the implications of going forward now following the last probably three to four years of increased tyranny, uh, increased despotism, increased big brother surveillance uh, state, uh, jackboot coming down on the back of your neck. Um, and why it's important and a breaking story uh, as of yesterday in France um, concerning the restriction of the freedom of speech and the way that you are being cattled continuously now into being obedient, to be servile and to not challenge anything. And what I'm suggesting to you is if you don't do something about it reasonably quickly, then what's going to happen is you are going to be buried under this tsunami of legislative statutory restriction that is actually sucking the air out of your very lungs. Uh, in France yesterday, uh, something called the Pfizer article was brought into law. And by this, any criticism of state-recommended medical procedures, especially related to the, um, the contents of vaccination, typically mRNA, messenger ribonucleic acids, um, are strictly condemned and now made into a criminal offence. Whereby, if you uh, protest or object or criticise the efficacy of these absolutely 100% safe uh, medical interventions, then you're subject to the possibility of a 45,000 euro fine and up to three years in prison. How about that for your six-month introductory offer to the New World Order? So um, what's happening is we, we need to come up with solutions. I think we all agree on that. Now, over the last two weeks particularly, I've been listening to uh, the various talking head pundits on the internet. Um, if we're looking at the UK in particular, uh, we've got the likes of Michael of Bernicea appearing on um, the Richard Vobes' channel. We've got David Icke doing his usual commentary. We've got um, all the people who were uh, in the Matrix organization still looking for answers. Um, people like Simon Spaniard still trying to come up with a solution. Uh, White Rabbit Trust. You've got then Alex Jones, you've got Russell Brand, you've got Tucker Carlson, you've got uh, Tom Fitton at Judicial Watch in the United States. Um, and what is missing here is the point. They're all dancing around the center of the argument and nobody is coming up with a, a fixed and firm solution. And this is why today's video is on this topic, which is probably the silver bullet if there was such a thing, and I'm just suggesting that there isn't, but this is the closest thing that you're going to come uh, to um, if you wish to distance yourself from what's happening to you and what is going to be happening to you very, very quickly. Um, what it's basically saying here is birth certificate, legal name, fraud. And this um, CRSS stands for Clausula Rebus Sic Stantibus. And we've also put now here Invocati uh, on it because we are asking you to invoke it. Um, Clausula Rebus Sic Stantibus is an international and private law um, clause which allows a contract to be rendered null or rendered void if the circumstances change dramatically from the intention of the parties from when the, the deal or the treaty or the pact or the agreement was put together. It is an antidote to something and it's an antidote to this. 
Pacta sunt servanda, which means promises must be kept. So, this is what you are author authoritarianly labored into. You are propagandized into believing that promises must be kept. But unfortunately, the promises that are going to be kept by you are the ones that are put onto you by author authoritari author authoritarian, um, governmental, private interested um, mercenary solutionaries who want to control the agenda and want to control everything that you do within society. And as a result, what these things tend to produce are something called adhesion contracts. Now, an adhesion contract is primarily a contract between you and another party whereby the, um, the, the, um, the weight of the contract and the clauses within the contract are massively skewed towards the individual that's offering it. Usually these contracts are on a take it or leave it basis. So for a mortgage, for electricity, for water, for probably um, uh, internet services these days, uh, for transportation, for utilities generally, and for maybe um, state taxes, council taxes, they are things that are put on you which you've got no reasonable opportunity to refuse. And so the one who's creating that contract can put whatever clause they want in and you're supposedly responsible for joining or jumping through the hoops. So what I'm actually saying is this, this brocade, as it's called, this so-called fundamental, absolute, certain principle, almost certain as death and taxes, um, this principle, this brocard here, um, is not as sacrosanct as you might have been led to believe. And why I'm suggesting that today is that we have this here, Clausula rebus sixtantibus, as an antidote to this. Now, what I'm covering here in this video are the, the, the general parameters of where I think you need to start looking and looking quickly. One of the main reasons for this is that there are two major pieces of legislation in 2024 that are barreling down upon you faster than a Mack truck and they are going to impact you dramatically. So the, the police state, the new world order, um, it isn't coming, it's already here. Okay. Now, we have two major events coming up. We've got one in May at the United Nations, and this is the U United Nations um, Assembly are all meeting to vote on the WHO proposals for um, pandemic and health-related criteria um, organizational involvement in sovereign nations um, health policy. So in effect, if the 143 or so countries vote positively on this, which I think they will, and I don't think there's any that are going to veto it, then what that means is that the, the WHO, as of May, will be able to make uh, all related policy uh, involving medical intervention, health care in your country. Okay, so that's bad news, bad news really. But there is something else on the agenda as well. Uh, and that is also called the United Nations Agenda 2030 as for a strategy for legal identity for all. Okay, now this is the pivot. This is why I'm offering this solution now. And it's a solution that will work. Yeah, I mentioned or not criticized other parties uh, in the first few minutes of this video who are constantly talking, chatting, and not really coming up with this is the action plan. This action plan that you really need to take is something to take you right the way back on your evolutionary journey, not to when uh, supposedly... Uh, Homo sapiens came from Cro-Magnum or Neanderthal. We need to go further back to the very first particle 
that created the cycle of life. Otherwise, we're always going to be behind the eight ball or we're always going to be blocked by something. So where I'm taking you back to in time is something called the birth certificate. And what you have or what you are operating under is something called legal name fraud. It is actually illegal for you to be using the legal name. Now, why that would be so is there's a lot of theology in it, there's a lot of spiritual direction in it, but ultimately it is a control agenda between Lucifer and God. So if we're looking at the Lucifer rebellion, that is a materialistic perspective of the world. That means live for today, dwell in materialism, cash is king, you're on your own, it's a survival of the fittest, it's dog eat dog, uh, but you've just got to get through it and that's just the way the world is. However, there is an opposing situation to this, which isn't uh, so much an opposing situation, but it's, it's really a perspective of, of, you could say, that it, that's typically, typically treated as the fall. The fall of man, which is a fall in consciousness um, and not a necessarily a, a physical fall. So what we've got here is a stair step drop down from where we might have been right to where we are now. And that is tied in with everything to do with materialism. So what I'm trying to address here is that the birth certificate has a lot of implication in it that you're usually totally unaware of. And to be quite honest, you were not actually party to it when the, the fun all began. So if we look at the conception of this birth certificate, prior up to your birth, um, you for sure did not create the body. In fact, your, your mother grew the body and your mother and father contributed 44 plus 2 for a 46, uh, 23 each chromosome count plus 2, the X and the Y chromosome. So you didn't actually have anything to do with the, the DNA or creating the, the body and you wouldn't claim to have. Um, following on from that, um, at the time of the birth, you didn't choose the name. You didn't choose your first name, your Christian name. You didn't choose the family name or the name that's appended to you by the state. You didn't create or register the birth certificate. You didn't sign any documentation in the hospital. And so you proceeded from this event here, the birth event, um, as... Um, something that had been given away or given up by your mother. And on all the birth, certificate, uh, birth certificates, especially in the United Kingdom or Commonwealth country, it actually says informant. That's the designation for your mother. And as you will realize, an informant uh, is also uh, termed in, in, in criminal um, language as a, a stool pigeon, a grass, a narc, um, or somebody, in effect, what, who has given up something. They've given up or betrayed the confidence within uh, a group of individuals who've been involved in something that the authorities are interested in finding out, and this individual comes in as the informant and on a deal for exchange of information is allowed to have something happen. Yeah, or, or, or rewarded. So from the informant, then we've got the registration coming from the word regis or roy for royale. And we've got registration and then we've got a certificate. 
The certificate is the absolute proof positive without any contention whatsoever that something's going on because there's no other creature on the planet that requires certification or registration in a registry when it is born. So there is something going on and it's not as you think. It's not just, oh, a convenient way so they know who you are and where to find you. Everything spins off from this birth certificate. And when I mean everything, I mean you cannot, uh, you cannot receive medical attention. You can't go to school. You can't go to university. You can't apply for a job. You can't actually work. You can't get married. Everything subtends from the birth certificate. But coming back to this conundrum here, why you are never getting anywhere is that you already have a name. So that name is all to do with this, the who and the what you are. And it seems to be a continuous preoccupation of man over the centuries that is always doing the same thing. There's no animal or creature on the planet that's going around asking, what am I? A tiger knows what it is, a fish knows what it is, a crow knows what it is, and an elephant. They're not wandering around having a, a psychological, philosophical, theological discussion of the how, the where, and the what. But man is constantly searching somehow because he doesn't quite get something. And the reason he doesn't quite get something is because there's been an event, a blocking of mind, a forgetting of, and most um, world religions all speak unreservedly about a return. So it doesn't matter where you're returning to, where, whether you're returning to the heaven of the Prophet Muhammad or Allah, where you'll be greeted by a thousand virgins, or whether it's the Roman Catholic interpretation, childishly portrayed as sitting in heaven on a cloud, you know, doing nothing all day, being uh, greeted by St. Peter, or whether it's the Buddhists who want you to become uh, a Buddha for the benefit of all, or an ascended master, um, it doesn't matter. They all speak of an evolution. So, as you can probably work out where this is going, there's got to be a disconnect. And a disconnect has got to come down here, and this birth certificate has got to be annulled. It's got to be neutralized, it's got to be antidoted, because whether you realize or not, uh, when you're in the hospital, uh, in the United States, they produce something called a, uh, a certificate of live birth. In the UK and Commonwealth countries, they probably just produce a birth certificate. But in addition to that, you get something called the Guthrie test, and you get the heel prick. So you've got two things. One, the... I'm not going to... You get, these are the nicest feet you've ever seen. You get the baby's feet are printed, foot printed, just like fingerprinted, okay? And they go onto a card, and that card goes off in batches, and it ends up somewhere. The other thing they do is they have a card with a series of circles on and the Baby's heel is uh, foot pricked with a needle. How nice. Welcome to the world. And drops of blood are taken and put onto that card. And so now what we have here is an esoteric Vatican Luciferian agenda to take control of two things. The blood for the DNA, which is the currency of the universe, not only are they doing it to take control of the, the DNA life aspect, but also it's an ability to screen and, and test for genetic components in, should we say, rather 
developed evolutionary beings who might have certain powers or abilities that wouldn't be naturally occurring in the general population. Um, and the feet are printed uh, symbolically so that the card that the feet prints actually go onto are Vatican property. So the first thing that the feet esoterically and spiritually touch are the Vatican, the land of the Vatican. So now what we've got is a mind, body and spirit um, capture of this individual. Now, why do they even go through these procedures if it's not important? Do you think they're doing it just because it, it, they feel good about it or so that the parents can have a nice little card with some feet prints on it to take home, which is just a copy. But no, there is a reason that all of this is, is done. So where I'm going with this is there's a lot to take in and there's a lot to follow, and I appreciate that. And so what I'm doing now is really throwing down the gauntlet I'm throwing down the gauntlet, gauntlet to people like Alex Jones and David Icke and Tucker Carlson, Russell Brand, to try and say, look, um, you're talking a lot and there's a lot of chatter and there's a lot of uh, fame and fortune out there that people are interested in and they want numbers on their uh, YouTube channel. Uh, who doesn't? Uh, but a lot of people are in it for the profit. Now, while we're all talking and sitting around, the Trojan horse has successfully come into Sparta and we have now a problem. And if you don't do something about it, then you're going to be crushed very, very soon under this personage tag, right? So this is coming down to the fact that when you were registered here, when you were certificated, you in effect became um, what's called an IPO, an initial purchasing, uh, uh, sorry, initial purchase offering, which is under the SEC rules for incorporation. Okay, so you were turned from a human and sold spiritual being into on this side, and you were diverted down across here. So you could have this gang of satanic, luciferian individuals, self-appointed authoritarian figures who have a moral and social um, sway to control you no matter how because they're trying to keep you in the belief that you are nothing other than um, uh, an 80 year life expectancy accident or casual being that's evolved from a monkey on the from the you know the savannah plains uh, so many million years ago and that's the deal, and that's just how it is. Look, you're, the nature of you is animalistic. You're just a creature like everything else. However, there is another message, and people like the Buddha, and people like uh, Jesus, and many uh, masters have come along since then to tell you, whoa, 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 that's not quite true. In fact, it's, it's very not true. And this is why you stay on this side of the fence if you're staying with this you're committing a fraud that they are very happy for you to keep going along with because you're playing their game. On the birth certificate, um, it actually states quite categorically that this um, birth certificate, warning, this certificate is not to be used for the purposes of identity. Think about it. It's not to be used for the purposes of identification, yet every single thing you need from a passport, from a bank account, from uh, your national insurance number, requires documentary proof of who, who you are. So you're committing a fraud by using the legal name that they've set you up to operate under. And not only that, if you go to uh, ITH305, 
Um, that's what's called International Tax Handbook 305. Um, it states quite specifically that the Companies Act is not there to register a company. When somebody applies to um, create a company, all it really is doing is getting a birth certificate. Those are the exact words, a birth certificate to prove incorporation. So this is what we've got here. We've got an IPO, you, little Johnny, getting born into the world, but being abandoned by the parents and handing over, in effect, when it's come out of a, a, a hospitality or hospital unit and it's emerged in an emergency room into the traffic flow here of this gang who basically said, we'll turn you into value. We will trade you. And that's what they're doing. So the value of all this stuff that people like... Um, the Matrix Freedom Gang are running around trying to pursue that, um, I don't know, others are looking to try and, and track down, is, is doomed to fail if we haven't undone the stitching at the beginning. It's almost like um, a safety belt in a car. The weave on the safety belt goes that way, and then it goes that way, and then there's another layer of that way. So coming along and, and thinking, oh, well, what I'll do is I'll get in touch with the land registry, or I'll get in touch because I'm a farmer, and this was on Richard Vobes' channel fairly recently, and what I'll do is I'll put a tick in one of the other boxes, uh, and then I'm responsible for property upkeep and everything else now, but, but what they're failing to realize is they have no standing. They're welded into the box from the get-go. The moment you come out of, of the, the stall, you're branded, you're blood typed, they know everything about you, and you are theirs. The only way you have to get out or can get out of this is through a spiritual quest, a, a spiritual journey whereby you reclaim who you are. And you can do it genuinely, you can do it disgenuinely, you can pretend a little bit, but it really does come down to the fact that you only have one choice. All the world's problems you think are multifaceted. You can choose this, you can choose that, then I've got to do this, then I've got to do the other, uh, but no, that's not true. You've only got one thing, and it all comes down to authority or authorship over creation or creativity. This side of the aisle believes that they've got control over you and everything you need to do or want to do, you need to get authority permission from here. God on the other side of the, the aisle says, no, you've got the perfect ability to do everything that, that say Jesus had or the Buddha had to manifest things, to create the world around you as you see fit. But what you're all laboring under is this teaching that's come to you from a corrupted, um, uh, what's called solar templar initiation uh, of guys from, particularly from the, the Atlantean period, which has been progressively inherited down to the current uh, possessors of the notebooks. Um, typically now the Vatican in charge, and they're basically telling you, no, we've got authorship, you're just us, we'll look after you and we'll do and tell you what to do. So you've got to get from out of it, but as your parents unwittingly put you into some type of deal, now the responsibility is yours to get from under the wheels of this thing that's crushing you. And if you don't do something from here on in, you're an accessory to the fact or accessory after the fact. So what an accessory is, is something has happened. It's supposed to be criminal. It's illegal. And you found out about it, but you do nothing about it. You just keep quiet. You have a, a responsibility 
maybe not a legal one, but a moral one to do something about it. And that's really where we're standing at the moment. So the good news is, um, there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is the world is changing. The bad news is the world is changing. Unfortunately, the bad news is it's coming closer. And in 2024, we've got a lot of very, very strange and important things happening. In May also, at the time of the United Nations WHO meeting, May, I think May the 7th, we've got the Russian elections. Uh, so Putin uh, destined to win there unless he gets thrown out and some more hawks come in who have got more of aggressive intention towards, um, towards Europe. We've also got supposedly the presidential elections in the United States, which various things could happen. If the neocons want Biden to remain in, if they get involved in a war or an emergency situation, then the elections will be torched. They'll be abandoned. They'll be folded. So Biden will just journey on as president. Uh, and if anything happens to him, Kamala Harris will take over. So we've got that as a problem. And we've got this United Nations Agenda 2030, a strategy for legal ID for all which means they want you to have a very, very strong legal identity and countries that don't have it at the moment are being pressured into doing that. Why? Ask yourself why. If we need to tell you why, I've put this document together for you. Okay? Hopefully you can read that. It's a treatise on the United Nations... Um, strategy for legal identity. Um, the practical nature of what I'm offering here, I'll just, I'll just give you an idea. This is 82 pages of information that is information and a solution. This isn't, it isn't theory, it's something that works and it works because without an esoteric knowledge without a secret society background of how this group with the Masonic Club of the Judiciary, the Supreme Court, the um, Inns of Law in, in London, and the whole nefarious clique of individuals have sewn this together for you without understanding it to some degree, then I'm afraid what you'll do is you'll just continue protesting, you'll continue saying I'm not this and I want that, and you'll get nowhere. So what I'm proposing is practical issues, because if this is correct, and it is, most of the, the civil um, law in Europe is Roman law, the civil law that incorporates this as a, as a construct, a tenet of law, is also something that is perfectly valid. And so what I'm suggesting now, going forward, we're putting some stickers together. We're going to stick it to them to make it practical for you. So if you follow the link in the video below, or if you go onto the area52.life website, um, go to services, Scroll down and you'll see name fraud and it will give you the ability to go to the shop and purchase this, which I would suggest everybody does. If you don't take any action with it, you might as well put it in the Kazi and use it as toilet paper. Yeah? Buy it, take action with it. It all is explained in here. Not only that, for people who are uh, members of Area 52 and people who aren't, don't forget, the other thing that we've got for you is the declaration of divorce. So there are two things here. We are 100% pushing towards a solution here that is practical. We've got a state. We've got you in the state. We will give you a new birth not certificate, we'll call it something else, but a new creative, not even identity, a creative natural perspective on life, born out of something that is real and exists,
that can't be den denied. Uh, it's the self-declaratory principle of statehood, plus the self-declaratory nature of individual sovereignty, which you shouldn't forget. But unless you do it, they'll continue just carrying on. They'll drag you into court. You'll try and say, well, I'm this and I'm that. And that. Whoa, no, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. And they'll, they never bang the gavel, actually, but um, only in films. But then they'll have you removed from the court or the, the bailiffs and the enforcement teams will come in and strip you blind because you don't know who you are. So you have to start manning up spiritually and you've got to take a decision. You don't have thousands of them. You only have one. It's a, just like when a, a piece of metal is struck very violently, it magnetizes it. And that's really what needs to be done for you uh, spiritually. Otherwise, you're just going to get ground into the ground by all of this. That's the Supreme Court. That's the, the, the judiciary. That's the enforcement teams. It's the police. Um, there's something called Eurocop now that has just been, not just been created, but look it up, Eurocop. It's an amalgamation of um, uh, police departments, European-wide, worldwide, uh, that are coming together to create one police unit. And this is how we've gone from bobbies in hats like this with uh, wooden truncheons in 20 years to now SWAT teams who are walking around with tasers and automatic weapons uh, for you when you just, you know, you park in the wrong place. So these things are all, all very important. Um, you just need to, to take action. I think I've, I've covered everything as much as I can without making it too long. Um, I don't think I've, I've missed too many things. Um, no, I think that's about, about it. Um, it's involved, but you do need to do something about it. It can be made very simple. So don't forget, Area 52 has got its own notary service. We will be able to issue new uh, identity or certification for a birth event. You can also look at what's called ABC, uh, Adopted Birth Certificates which also start from the day you decide to be adopted. Um, and so that's all very important things going forward so that when you are cattled, when they start coming and ordering you to have things done to you which you object to, then you have at least the opportunity to distance yourself from it. And what I would suggest you do is you distance yourself from it beforehand, not after. The last thing you ever want to be doing is getting into a discussion with, um, with Gestapo people with, with military helmets kicking your front door in. They're not going to listen. However, if your house is designated or marked as one that shouldn't be touched or interfered with because, well, we don't really want the consequences of that, then that's something I think you should consider because the opposite is very prevalent. If you're doing it on your own, you're just going to get buried. So come together, Area 52, look at the links that I'll put down there below. Um, if you haven't already done it, go to area52.live and fill in the declaration of divorce. And for all those people who want to look to put this very simply, on any demand that for money or um, uh, payment that come from the local authorities, from bailiffs, for collection agencies, for utilities, for mortgages, then this is the challenge. And you can prove it easily in your documents before they take it to court. Okay? So this is the document that explains it all. You should go and look at it. Um, it's available for you. Um, a lot of work's gone into it. 82, 85 pages of detailed information and some esoteric uh, knowledge for you also. Uh, 
inevitably pass the video on. I don't say subscribe because um, the numbers, if I was doing cat videos, we'd get um, thousands or hundreds of thousands of views. But with this type of information, I think it's um, governed. I think there's a restrictor on how it gets um, populated. Or maybe people just aren't generally interested in it. But the squeeze is on. 2024 is going to be very, very difficult going into 2025. And I haven't even touched on the situation in Ukraine. I haven't touched on what's happening in the Middle East. I haven't touched on the fact that, you know, provoking Iran is something you would be crazy to do. It's got a standing army of around about 600, 750 thousand men it's got 200,000 on the reserve list which is nearly a million then it's got the rest of Hamas Hezbollah 125,000 Houthis you know who basically use pea shooters so shouldn't be frightened uh, uh, frightening anybody with plus your migration problem plus the move now into Europe possibly by the Russians uh, because NATO is a finished concern, it hasn't got any more arms, no weapons, and everything's been uh, exported to Ukraine, gone out the back door to Iran. Thank you very much um, for the move forward into a one world government, a new world order, which makes Orwell's 1984 look like, um, look like the Garden of Eden. Anyway, that's all for now. Hope you enjoyed the video. Watch it again, um, like it, and uh, more coming soon on a subject called Capture the Currency. I'm going to show you how to capture the currency in whatever nation you're in. And what do I mean by that? Inflation proof it. Okay, legal tender, real notes, the ones that you've already got on the street. Okay, Peter Vingen saying thank you.